The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Jezebel then writes a letter, takes Ahab's seal, and she stamped it as though the king has written a letter and has sealed it. And in the letter, Jezebel tells the elders of the land, when you receive this letter, set some scandals against Naboth. Say that you are spoken against the king and against God. And then have him stoned. Because in the Old Testament, even in the time of Jesus, you are not considered guilty unless some people have witnessed against you. So let's go to 1 Kings 21. We'll read 9 and 10. 1 Kings 21, 9, 10. In those letters he wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seat two scandals opposite him and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king. Meanwhile, this young man has not cursed the king. He has not cursed God. But she writes, and this is a lie. And then you got people who are also liars. And then they did this deceitful thing. They knew that he has not cursed anybody. But because they want to satisfy the whims and caprices of the queen, they did it. Now, then take him out and stone him to death. They did it, and Naboth was killed. When the news came to her that Naboth is dead, he went to the husband and said, My friend, I've gotten you the vineyard. Go and take possession of it. This is wickedness in the highest order. That is why she was eaten by dogs. See, we do things and we think that God up there he is not seeing it. He's seeing it. And sometimes he takes revenge on us. If we are Christians, let us show that we are Christians. Don't let us behave as if we are not as children of God. Let us be very careful with our tongue and our deeds. Let's watch that closely. Our tongue and our deeds. Liars are hypocrites. What did I say? Liars are hypocrites. Now, hypocrites are masqueraders. You see, sometimes you see this young man with some masks. They put a face on their face. So what you see is not their face. They are masqueraders. They are pretenders. Hypocrisy is to deceive others. When someone is a hypocrite, he doesn't deceive himself. He knows that I am the one in the mask. But the mask is to tell you that I am not a person. So hypocrites deceive others. But you see, when you make lying a habit, Habit is what we repeatedly do. Anything that we repeatedly do is a habit. Now, it builds into our character. So when you are a hypocrite and you keep telling lies, you graduate into what we call duplicity. Duplicity is now deceiving yourself and telling yourself it doesn't matter. Because when he started deceiving others, he was enjoying it. And now he deceives others, he deceives himself, and he says that it doesn't matter. Sometimes, young men can say that man should survive. Man must eat. The first day he picked somebody's money, he was a bit remorseful. But somehow, he has deceived someone. Now he keeps picking people's money. And now when he picks someone's money, he doesn't even feel it. And he tells himself, this is a method of survival. So he has graduated from hypocrisy to duplicity. He has become a duplicate of himself. Something else, not himself. He is something else. The whole of Matthew 23 speaks about hypocrisy. 
So when you go home, please study Matthew 23. You see that one. Ephesians 4.19 says that, Ephesians 4.19, having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. They now lose all sensitivity because they have kept practicing lies. They have kept practicing lies until now. They lie and they don't feel it. Sometimes they even lie and they say that the Almighty God will not see it. Let's read Psalm 73, verse 11. Psalm 73, verse 11. And this one I want us to read together. Ready, go. They say, how can God know? Does the Most High have knowledge? Now they have even moved from duplicity. Now they are apostates. They think that, I mean, we don't have anything to do with God. We don't have anything to do with God. But brothers and sisters, are we together? If you are here, let me see by show of hands. Yeah, don't practice lying. If you start practicing at this age, by the time you grow to be me, you are a dangerous man. Don't practice it. Did you hear that the Bible said that Satan entered Judas? Yeah. If you keep doing these things, soon you have a character that looks like that of Lucifer. And I don't want any of us to look like that, please. There are six things that God hates. The seventh is an abomination. Let's go and examine the seventh thing that God hates. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Proverbs 6, verse 16. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Now the word hate and detestable are of the same root. But when somebody says that somebody detests something, it is, it is stronger than hate. So he's saying that there are six things that God hates. Seven are detestable. Just trying to just play on words. That God hates or God detests the seven things. Or it could also mean that there are six things that God hates. The seventh one, God does not like it at all. But let's look at it closely. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven are detestable to him. Hosty eyes, that is pride. Arrogance, God hates arrogance. A lying what? Tongue, a lying tongue. Hands that share innocent blood. Hands that share innocent blood. God hates that. And then, a heart that devises wicked schemes. It is also deceit. It is also lying. You devise wicked schemes. Like David devising means to kill Uriah. He shed innocent blood and he still his heart devised that scheme. Like Jacob devising schemes to steal the birthright and the blessing from Esau. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who pours out lies. So the issue of the tongue and lying and deceit has taken about five of the seven things already. A person who stirs up conflict in the community God hates that. Now, in periods like this, it doesn't matter the political divide that you are. If you stir conflict in the community, the Bible says God hates it. Don't keep uh, telling people to do that which is evil. You must be agents of peace. God hates these things. You see, our world today, brothers and sisters, is full. I don't want to say full of lies, but let me say that truth is falling in the streets. Isaiah 59, from verse 13. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, inciting revolt and oppression, uttering lies, 
our heart have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Can we read the next line together? Truth has stumbled in the streets, and honesty cannot enter. It says that truth has fallen in the streets, and honesty cannot enter. So in the world that we are living in, truth has really fallen in the streets. And honesty cannot enter. If you want to be very honest and very just in a certain community, they will crash you down. Because here we don't deal with, with truth. Because truth is falling down in the streets. That is the world we live in. Why is it so? Because the devil is the ruler of this falling world. And his nature is what we learned last week. Let me remind you of the nature of the devil. John 8, 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That is the nature. So if the devil is a ruler of the fallen world, then he has affected this world with his nature. So truth cannot be found. It is falling in the street. At your workplace, truth is falling. If you want to be very honest, sometimes people gun at you. But you see, we have to stand out as men and women of God among the crowd. Those of us of the church, we are of a different brand. First Timothy 3 verse 14. 1 Timothy 3, 14. Although I hope to come to you soon, I'm writing you these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. So the church is a pillar and foundation of the truth. When we are talking about pillars, we are talking about something that is concrete. When we are talking about foundation, we are talking about something that is concrete. So, so far as the church is concerned, the church is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Truth may fall in the streets, in the world, but not in the church. But the church is you and the church is me. So that when we go to our workplaces, there may not be truth there, but you should produce the truth. You should make the difference. If the devil is in you and you tell lies, no problem, because he is a liar. But if Christ is in you, let's jump to John chapter 1, verse 14. If Christ is in you, what manner of person ought you to be? Now, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us, amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father. And let's read the very last line. Full of what? Full of grace and truth. As the devil is full of lies and there is no truth in him, James says that God, there is no shadow of turning in him. There is no any deceit. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. He is full of truth. So if we claim that we are children of God, and we claim that Jesus is in us, then let us make the difference. Let's resurrect truth on the streets. Let's get it up again. Let's get truth wherever you are. Don't tell lies by words. Neither do that by actions. In both cases, God reads. And if the intention is evil, the intention is to deceive, then you are a liar. I pray that we don't belong to that category of people. Let people know that we can possess the nations by letting the truth drive out the lies. Let us let our light shine wherever we are. Let us prove to people that we are a branch of Jesus. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you go to work, 